Hey guys, it's Trey here once again, back with another API Gateway video. Last time we updated some references and we also added the different instances that you can register with under a service name. So today we're going to be able to, well, we're going to add functionality to be able to enable or disable these individual instances. So say if you have two instances running on two different servers and you want um, one of the instances to not be used because say you're uh, bringing the server down for maintenance or the server just goes down, then you can disable that one and the gateway will know not to use that instance until you re-enable it. What we're going to do today is we're going to write the functionality for it and then we're going to enable this 3001 instance and we're going to disable this 3002 instance and then we're going to watch the gateway work. So to start off with, let's go ahead and add the functionality. It's going to be an endpoint that's going to allow us to um, enable or disable a specific instance. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put this next function. We're going to need to put this above the router.all call that we have in our index.js file. If we don't put the call that we're about to make above the router.all call, then this router.all call will catch, it will match with our um, endpoint before we get to the one we're about to create. So that way it'll be actually running through this logic instead of the logic that we need to create. So make sure you put this call that we're about to make above the router.all call. This call is called the, we're going to say router.post. So it's going to be a post method. And then inside of here, we're going to put enable and then for slash API name. Now the name enable um, is probably not the best name for this uh, because you're going to be able to enable and disable the instances from this same endpoint. So if you think of a better name, please, by all means, rename it. But for me, I'm just going to call it um, enable. And then we're going to pass in our call back here. And then inside of here, we're going to need to set up a couple of variables that we're going to be able to use um, while we're running through this logic. So the first thing we're going to need to get is this API name from the parameters, which is right here. This is a path parameter. So we're going to say um, request.params.api name. All right, now that we have that, we can go ahead and get the request body. So I'm going to call it const request body. And then we're going to set that to request.body. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to check um, if the instance that you're trying to um, update for the enabled, if that instance actually exists. That's what we're looking for. So we're going to grab the instances from this API name. Let's go ahead and we're going to call this instances. And then we're going to call registry.services. And then we're going to pass in the API name. And then we're going to get dot instances and then from here um, we're going to need to actually get that instance so this is where we're going to do the the actual check for that instance how we're going to do this is we're going to look through this um, instances array and see if we can find um, an instance that has a URL that matches what you put in the request body so we're going to get that index and the way we're going to do this is we're going to say instances dot find index and then inside of here, we're going to have a method that's going to do the check. So I'm going to pass in a parameter called SRV, which is basically just like the, the service or whatever. We're going to say, we're going to see if the URLs match. So if this, if this URL in the instances array matches the URL in the request body, then we know we have a match. This is the instance that we want to change. So we're going to pull that out and get the index from that. So whatever index that one that matches is, is the one we're going to use to set. Once we get this index, we need to do a check to see if it actually exists. So if it doesn't exist, if this never, oh, we need to do a return, sorry. Inside of this find index, put return here. Um, if this returns, like if it doesn't find any um, that match, then it's going to return a negative one. So we need to check for that um, scenario there if it doesn't find it. So we're going to say if index equals equals negative one then that means it didn't find it and we're just going to return to the user that we didn't find it so i'm just going to say status error and then i'm going to say message could not find 
and then I'm going to change this to double quotes because I want to use the single quote inside of the message. So could not find. And then we're going to pass in the request body that URL. All right. So it's going to say could not find that URL for service. And then we're going to pass in the API name. All right. So basically it's going to say that it couldn't find it. Now, in the case that it does find it and it does actually exist, we want to handle it by updating the enable field and then also writing it back to the registry.json. So the, the way we're going to update the field is by we're going to say instances index. So we're going to get that index and then we're going to say dot enable. And then we're going to set that to the request body dot enable. So now that's going to set the instance. And it's going to set it to either enable or disable, depending on whatever you put in the request body. And from there, we need to actually do the write to the registry.json. So I'm just going to scroll down to our register function here. And I'm going to just grab that, that whole write, fs write file line. So I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to come back up here because it's pretty much the same logic. The only thing that's different is what we're returning. So here, we're writing it. And then we're going to need to change the actual messages. So if there's an error with writing it, then we're going to say could not enable slash disable. So whichever one you decided to do. And then we're going to need to say the instance. So we're going to need to go request body dot URL. Then we're going to say for service and then we got the API name here and then we'll just pass on the error at the end. And this is pretty much going to be the same for down here. So let me just grab everything up until there, paste it in down here. Then I'm going to switch this to successfully enable slash disable request by the URL for service name. So now um, it'll write this to the registry.json and save it. So now we have this enable API name that is done. So now the endpoint is ready to go. But now we have to set it up to the point where our API gateway actually uses this information. And we're going to do this in the loadbalancer.js file. Since this is where we're getting our next index from, we might as well just go ahead and check it before we um, return it. So we're going to do this by, instead of just returning the new index, we need to check if this new index, if that instance with this new index is actually enabled or not so if it's enabled then go ahead and return it otherwise we need to get a, a different index because this index isn't enabled so i'll show you what i'm talking about now so what we're going to create a function that's going to be um in this load balancer class so we're going to write load balancer and then we're going to write is enabled this is a function that we haven't created yet but we are about to so we're going to pass in the service. We're going to pass in the new index. And then we're going to pass in the load balancer dot round robin. All right. So under here, we need to go ahead and add um, our new function, which is going to be load balancer dot is enabled. And in here, we're going to pass service, the index and the load balance strategy. All right, once we have this, we can go ahead and create our one line function. So it's going to be return. Then we're going to check if the service dot instances index dot enabled. So if this is enabled, then we're going to say we're just going to return the index. If it's not enabled, then we're going to call the load balance strategy and pass in the service. All right, so what's actually happening here is we're going to start off by calling this round robin, and then we're going to go in here. We're going to get the service. So if it's, um, it's the same logic from before, if it's um, past the length of the index array, 
then we're going to, I mean the instance array, then we're going to go back to zero. Otherwise, it's just going to increment the index. And then we get that new index. And then we're just going to set the service index to the new index. Same as, same as before. It's all the same stuff. This is where it changes. So now, before we return it, we're going to check to see if that instance is enabled. So if the instance that um, this new index is pointing to is enabled, then we're just going to return that index. Otherwise, we're going to call load balance strategy, which is what when we pass it in here is going to be the round robin function. So basically, this is turning this into a recursive function um, based off of if the index is enabled or not. If the instance is enabled, then we just return the index. If it's not enabled, then we are going to recall load balance strategy to go to the next index to see if it's enabled or not. So it's just going to keep repeating until it gets to one that is enabled. So that's all we need to do for our gateway to use the instance enable field. All right, so from here, we can go ahead and start testing. So if I go to registry.json, we can see in the instances, there is no enabled field. But after we call, make a call to our endpoint, it should place an enabled field in here. So let's go ahead and we're going to start up our gateway on the left side. So we're going to say npm run dev. And this is going to run our gateway on our left side here. So it says gateway has started on port 3000. And on the right side, we're going to make that call to the um, API to enable um, we're going to start off enabling 3001, so we're going to set that to true, and then we're going to set 3002 to false. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here's the call. So it's going to be curl, and there's going to be a post, and the content type is application JSON, and then I have a URL um, of 3002, and then we have enable false. And we have enable false. So, and then I'm calling it to the API gateway. So when we make this call, it should update our registry.json file. So see, it says successfully enabled slash disabled uh, localhost 3002 for service registry test. So let's go ahead and check our registry test file and see if it did indeed enable it. I mean, disable it. So yes, here we go. So. Our 3002 instance has now has an enabled field that is set to false, which is exactly what we wanted. So let's go ahead and do the same thing, but for um, 3001, and we're going to set the enable to true. So I'm going to go back here. All right, so as you can see here, we have um, this 3001 and it's set to true. So I'm going to go ahead and call that. Boom. Now we have successfully enabled 3001 for registry test. Let's go ahead and take a look at this in the registry.json file. And let's go ahead and so now we can see that 3001 has been set to true. So the enable is true here, enable is false here. So when we call um make a call to our um gateway it should only use port 3001 so we're going to test this out by making a call to our fake api gateway i'm going to slide this over a little bit and then split this so we can make a call to our we're going to start up our fake api on this right screen here so i'm just going to run node server js all right so now we see that our fake api has been started up in this right pane over here i'm going to slide that out of the way and then now i'm going to make the call to this fake api and we should only see that on this left side on the actual gateway that is only using um the 3001 instance so let's go ahead we're going to say curl and it's going to be http colon slash slash localhost then we're going to go to 3000 and then we're going to call registry test because that is our um, api name and then we're going to call fake 
API, which is the endpoint in our fake um, API service. So when we hit enter, it says hello from fake API server, and we see that it um, the gateway used um, the port 3001. So if we call this again, usually it would go from 3001 to 3002 back to 3001, but now it should go straight back to 3001, and it does. This is because we have disabled the 3002 port. So basically, if we go back here, and if we were to enable this, then it would use it, even though we would get an error because it's not there's not actually anything running on port 3002. So I'm going to turn it on just because I want to show you that it does indeed work, even though we're going to actually get an error. So let's clear that. And then we run here, 3001, then 3002. Well, we didn't get an error, but we didn't get anything returned either. See, as you can see, we call registry test fake API, and there's just nothing returned because it's not running. So I guess we could spin it up and run it, but I don't want to do all that. Basically, you see how it works. So now that it's enabled, the API gateway is actually using it. Even though we're not getting anything back, it's the gateway is using it. So that is um, all for this video. Thanks for watching this video. Like and subscribe to the channel and all that jazz. And I will see you guys in the next video.